It's 1792 and the revolution is in its infancy. The French are now facing off against a coalition of European superpowers, including the Holy Roman Empire and Prussia at this battlefield. They are facing those two today. It is the Battle of Valmy. France is now fighting for its survival as the Prussians and the Holy Roman Empire march on Paris. They are going to try and stop them in their path here today at Valmy. And we have a glorious layered defense here as four French armies take on against two Prussian and two HRE. So yes, this is the Battle of Valmy. It's one of the most famous battles actually sort of in like a, a French, I guess you could say Napoleonic sort of like certainly I'd say uh, 18th century. It's going to be one of the most important, maybe you could say just sort of like modern day sort of like French history because it really did, uh, this battle really did save the French Revolution. At this point in time, the revolution was kind of stalling. They were losing a lot of battles and uh, and as I was saying, the HRE and the Prussians are actually marching straight on to, um, straight, marching straight on Paris. So yeah, it was actually uh, Dumeritz and Kellerman who were in charge of a uh, of a defense of of Paris, and uh, they were like kind of marching. Uh, well, Dumeritz was marching into the Netherlands and kind of like turned around to th uh, face uh, this new threat, and uh, Kellerman came, kind of came up from uh, Metz and kind of stopped them as well. But yeah, it's if they'd lost at this battle here, the French, it could have been very, very different. It could have been a like an occupation of Paris by uh, the HRE and the Prussians. It could have been an end to the revolution, and you'd have had no Napoleon. We've had no Napoleonic Wars, and then therefore no Napoleon Total War. And what a weird time that would have been. I don't know what would have happened then. You'd might not have had like the Pax Britannica, um, or you might have uh, just a bit earlier. Uh, it's kind of hard. It's like a, so many like wild things that could have been very very different. Um, but yes, we are here with another historical battle. That is for sure. And uh, it's certainly going to be a glorious one. It's a very, very grindy battle. It's a bit of a layered defense, as I was saying. So I don't think all the French armies can help each other. I am, I'm not sure who's going to get attacked first. It does kind of look like maybe this army, because the uh, HRE are getting pretty damn close. Um, but it, uh, it could be any of them, to be honest. The HRE are scouting out just about everywhere, uh, just about now. We have already seen, obviously, one cav engagement. The HRE lost that one. But they've got plenty more cav where they came from. Look at all, like this horde down here that they have. Just ready to go. But yes, if you're enjoying all things NTW3, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. It really does help out the channel. And if you want to see more, uh, if you want to get involved in more like NTW3, um, sort of like battles yourself, and you're struggling to get games, feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description, as is the uh, link to the mod as well. For those of you who haven't got it, uh, you can go and check it out. It's pretty, not too difficult to install. It's on ModDB. Not... Yeah, but yeah. Oh my gosh, actually, there's a lot of French cav here, to be fair. I'm saying that the uh, HRE have plenty of cav. Look at all this. Um, so yeah, we do have two different French factions here today. Obviously, we don't have a 1792 uh, France uh, like army because, well, it's not Napoleonic Wars. It's not what they focus on. But we are using 1799 Rhine and also 1796 France as well. Which, uh, yeah, the, the fact, like, the units might be, like, a little, like, the names would be different, maybe. But, like, the units being used at the time, that wouldn't have changed at all. It's still using Dragoons, still using Hussars. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it works out nicely. And there you go, you can see the HRE actually are losing those fight. The Dragoons there uh, are forcing them back. And actually, the French have gone now gone in with the Chasseur Cheval over here. Harassing was, like, a, a Dragoon or a... Something like that. And it looks like we're going to see a charge now. Looks like maybe Curassias or something going in. Yeah, they look like Curassias. They're going in. They're taking on Hussars. That is going to be a tough old fight for the uh, Hussars there. Yep. Well, I say that actually. The uh, Curassias redlining pretty oh, damn quickly there. Inside. And there you go. Look at that. The Chasseurs, the, the Miracles de Valmy. See, they named a unit, uh, a Chasseur unit after this battle as well. And yeah, the Curassias just about survived that. That's actually a little concerning, I'd say, for HRE, that the Curassi nearly redlined on Chasseur. Well, they did redline, nearly broke. But yeah, this battle actually has not got many casualties. There's only about a few hundred casualties on either side. Um, so already, probably now, at this point in the cab fight, we are seeing the amount of casualties there were um, in, in real life. But there's going to be plenty more today. Because this battle was actually more of a um, sort of a Our cannon duel it's one of, uh, than it was actually a, a, a line battle. Um, it's, it's more that, the, uh, that they actually stopped the Prussian and HRE advance rather than actually defeating them in battle. 
Um, it's kind of the big win for the French. But he has a big cannon sort of like duel, and the French should kind of win that. The artillerists were some of the best around in Europe. And oh, look at this! We've got a general that's going to get taken out here by Dragoons. This is a huge loss here. This is an all cav core. It really seemed like it. There's more H3 cav on the way. Look at this. They routed that general. And there you go. They've actually managed to get that general killed. Uh, that is not so good there for that H3 player. I don't know if he's got anything else. He's got some guns here that are very much open to be taken up. But yeah, look at that. The French come out of that one uh, very much on top. Uh, there are reinforcements, like I said, for the H3 on the way. Uh, looks like more like sort of like goons. Really hard to tell with the HRE early period what their uh, like their, their cab is. These either like Dragoons or Chevrolet or something like that. But yeah, we do have um, the uh, Prussian player is also going to be 1806. It's not going to be uh, sort of like 1792. Uh, again, the this point Prussia hadn't really sir. reformed its army, so it really actually doesn't matter. Like their army is still very much in the style of Frederick the Great. Um, so it actually, kind of works quite nicely for this scenario. Uh, it's not until after the battles of like Jena and Auerstadt that they kind of reform their army into a bit more of a uh, modern Napoleonic style. Uh, we've got a loss of uh, sound for muskets at the moment. That's a shame. Hope that returns. We've got some carabineers there uh, chipping away at infantry. And you can see here, just says all setting up. Oh, we actually had a bit of a charge over here as well. Looks like going for the guns. Looks like the guns survived though. Guard artillery here. Yeah, holding on. Um, but they have lost some crew, but they are just about holding on, which is good to see. Just some skirms over here at the moment. So it looks like they're going to start. They, they are, might have a line fight here pretty soon, um, it seems. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's, I think it is slightly layered in the sense that these French troops kind of a bit more withdrawn. I'm not really sure. It looks like it's slightly laid. Like, they, these guys are, like, standing behind the, the um, fence line here. Got the guns. It's a little bit layered. I would say it's, like, massively, but it is sort of. But it does look like it's sort of dying down as well a little bit here um, as both sides kind of, like, withdraw, sort of assess their losses, probably try and re-rally some men. It's a little, lot of cav here for the French alive. Uh, you got Gouchy, actually, as well here, which is, obviously, he goes on to become a marshal. And uh, he has... Uh, Responsible, I guess, for Waterloo a little bit. He gets uh, given those all those forces and marches off, and never to be seen again. But yes, yeah, so it's uh, certainly going to be an exciting one. Still, cavalry battalion, some heavy cavs still knocking about for the French as well. The dragoons are pretty solid as well. I feel like for the French in this period, so we'll see how they do. But yeah, it seems like it's calming down a little bit after that frenzy. Got some carabineers over here chipping away. I do kind of like the look. I prefer their bearskins though. And another cab charge here, and they've actually managed to get these uh, these guns this time. So the guard artillery have not survived. It looks like we've got hussars here that are now trying to mop them up. There you go. Looks like the uh, hussars are going to win that one. And this is the problem as well. Actually, I say that they um, got got uh, got. It looks like they just pulled them out. Guys, actually, a bloomin' hard to kill these guard artillery. Eight of them remain. But yeah, the problem is, is the red line. So if anything does route, it's going straight off the red line. There's something they need to keep in mind. Uh, both sides there by attacking that area. But yeah, the Austrians actually are getting well. Austrian, the HRE are getting out dueled here. I don't know if they're. I presume they're pretty decent at shooting. Like, typically Austria and the HRE uh, are pretty decent at shooting. HRE are basically Austria. Yes, their shooting stats are pretty decent. Also, they rely on mass, the HRE, quite often. You see, like, just huge, like, 3,000, 4,000 man armies. So, potentially, we'll see just numbers trying to overwhelm the French here. It's going to be difficult, though, for the numbers, because the French kind of tie themselves up in strong points like this hill. And they're going to just try and make the HRE and the Prussians bleed. They are moving guns as well. We've got another six oh no, sorry, a 12 pounder here. That's shifting over. That might be going either to replace the guard artillery if it falls or just if it's found a better spot, maybe. I don't know. I guess maybe they just they, they had it originally probably by these stakes and they're like, they're, they're not attacking here. We're going to just leave that spot. Prussia has now arrived on the battlefield as well. And um, they're kind of taking up the position of all that HRE cav that just vacated. See all the musketeers here. As you can see, they're all very much like in. Sort of like 
18th century style uniforms still. So actually, this faction works perfectly for the scenario. And they're going forward. Here come the Musketeers. Pressure 1806. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. I don't really know what its strength is. Probably it's Cav. Its infantry is nothing much to be desired, and it's getting absolutely pounded as its infantry right now by French guns. Kind of the story of this battle, historically, the French guns just pounded any uh, allied infantry that came forward, and that's why the um, Duke of Brunswick, who's the commander-in-chief at the time of the uh, coalition forces, he actually fell back, uh, and he just get, he kind of was like, well, we can't break through, so we're going to just fall back, and uh, that was kind of how the battle went. It was not very, not a very exciting one in the sense of like losses, not like your Borodinos or your Waterloo's, where like thousands of tens of thousands of men are killed. But uh, it's it's still it's like a major one in French history because it saved their revolution. And literally, I think the day after this uh, battle happened, the Repu like the French Republic was announced. Like they were like, oh, the revolution saved. Let's announce the Republic. There's a major battle in that sense as well. And it looks like, look at this, Prussia's really struggling to set up a <laughs> artillery gun. I don't know if it's stuck and it's bugged out now. But yeah, that, that's unfortunate if it's stuck on that on that fence and just lost forever. But we've actually got a um, uh, another gun over here that's been lost. I think that's just been taken out by a lucky French cannonade. Where there are like uh, French cannons, eight pounders, literally opposite the gun. So it's quite likely that they just sniped it. Uh, so that is unfortunate there. HRE guns are now firing away as well. So they are going to be trying to chip away at those French defences. And it looks like we've got... Uh, yeah, pressure is really massing up here for some sort of assault. He's got cav, infantry all ready to go smashing on in. Um, he certainly has more guns, uh, like muskets at the, mo at the ready here. Uh, the French can really only sort of salvage what, three, maybe seven units if they bring those ones across to bear. Um, and there's at least two lines, maybe as many as 10 or 12 infantry units there. And it looks like the French have uh, forced back the HRE here as well. They've decided that they've given up wanting to have a little bit of a, a shoot off and they're going to go in for the melee. But these men that are fighting in the revolution, these are what Napoleon sees as like the cream of the crop of like the Frenchman at the time, like the French soldier. Like anything before pre, like pre-1805, it's like the cream of the French military. And everything after that is kind of like like all the veterans have died because they're so brave they just get themselves killed um which it might be true might be true i guess also they're just quite old i would have thought after like 10 10 or so years of fighting you've probably probably done your fair share you can retire depends how old you are i guess also there's a good chance if you fought for like 10 years from like say yeah 1792 to 1802 Two. You've probably got yourself killed in one of those battles. And then we've got some French Dragoons going in. Looks like they're going into, I don't know what you recognize this unit at all for the Prussians. Maybe a Hussar or something like that? I really do not recognize that unit. Some light cavalry, some sort. But yeah, Dragoons going in. Um, they might win that fight. Looks like both sides are redlining here. Yeah, but all Prussia really needs to do, you have this light infantry here, just shoot into the side, do a little bit of damage. Uh, and instead, yeah, the uh, French could engage that unit, but the Prussians are bringing out what looks like some heavy cav here or something. It comes sweeping on in. Yeah, that might be heavy cav. Might just be a big um, Dragoon unit. I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell. Prussian heavies don't always necessarily have the cuirass on. Uh, so I think that might be a Prussian heavy. But anyway, it's it's managed to route the French Dragoons, whatever it is. Yeah, this Prussian player over here being a lot slower. They've got their light infantry up here, but they haven't got any of their lines yet ready in position. They're actually still shifting them over. There's a French cabin all the way back here. Look at that. Chasseur Cheval has got all the way into the back lines. It has actually been taken out by uh, by French in uh, by sorry by Prussian infantry. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a sneaky little unit. I'm just trying to see if it took anything out. I don't think it did. That was lucky that the Prussians got that then. That could have caused all sorts of problems in the back lines. But yeah, it seems like. It's just a bit of a build-up. There's a few little skirmishes going on here and there. Just as, like, both sides just get ready for the all-out slog that is about to begin. I I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, 1792. It's got, again, one of the earliest, like, historical battles we've done. It is certainly... Certainly way before the time period of the, uh... Of the mod. It would be cool if they did do, like, a revolution... I don't think like a revolution total war, but if they just like added a revolution, um, like cause or like armies or something like that, I don't think it would change much. I know it's not obviously the great focus of NTW3, and they have other time periods they want to kind of obviously do 
Like 18, no th uh, 1813, still not got anything. Oh, here we go. Engagement going on over here. Cav is starting to break for the French. As, as safe for the HRE, the uh, cavalry here managed to hold on. I'm sorry, the infantry here managed to push back the cab. Are we going to see a counter charge now? I think cavalry battalion might think about it. No, they're just going to get shot in the face and they might get routed themselves. You need to be careful of your own infantry here, shooting your uh, cab as well. You need to be careful of that. Yeah, like I said, this is the danger of fighting so near the red line. You're just going to risk losing your own troops. Oh, well, like risk losing troops just to routing very, very quickly when they might re rally. We've got Suchet here, actually. He was certainly not one of the commanders at this time. Suchet was definitely not uh, an officer. But that's why, that's the only issue with having like 1799 is the generals aren't quite accurate. I don't think we have a Dumeritz or a Kellerman. Actually, we, I mean, we could have a look. We got Le Corbe. Yeah, definitely not at the battle. Um, or at least not as a general. He might have been like president or something else. Yeah, Suchet, I don't, yeah, definitely was not there. We've got two of him. I don't know where the other general is. Oh, are they right next to each other? Oh, they are. We've got Tassu. Tassu might have been there. He's certainly, obviously, a bit more of a revolutionary general. But I don't know. Again, wouldn't have been there as a general. Might have been there as an officer. I don't really know much about, like, who was present at what, uh, like, war battles. I know, like, Ney was present in quite a lot of the, uh, the Rhine battles throughout the revolution, as was, um... So I can't remember, one like Sult or someone else like that. I think they had a bit of a rivalry that started from the revolution. I'm literally waffling right now as we just watch this battle. I do apologize. But uh, yeah, Trulio is here. They're just shooting away at, uh, at the units here. They seem, seem like we're having a bit of a line fight starting to begin over here now. Another Cav, uh, like Cav uh, counterattack here. As the, uh, seems like they just sent in one lone HRE unit. They did try just one lone HRE unit to try and break through there. Having learned myself the hard way, setting one unit on its own is definitely not the way to go. To try and break through a line. I mean, you're going to need, like, some... It's going to have to be some unit to try and do that. Like, a, an old guard or something like that. Like, a grognard is going to be, like, able to break through. Yeah, these caravaneers uh, are, like, feed skirmishes rather than line infantry. Like they become. Oh, men are breaking. Oh, where are they breaking? Oh, over here. We have a friend, a... Uh, it's like Grushi. Yeah, Grushi's broken there. He just got a nasty volley, that was all. I don't think these guys can form square. Yeah, Cavalry Patele here, proving they can't. The yeah, HRE kind of stabilized. And then you look like they're going to get counter charged here. Our men there you go, running, yeah. Sir. That's the only problem. There's no support for this unit. After it kind of like got stuck on that one unit and they didn't route it very quickly, it was going to be a rough well, rough one. Then they, they, they need to be careful with their cab to the uh, French. I think that the hatred probably still has quite a lot more. I would have thought the coalition had a lot more. It's kind of like their strength. The Chasseurs over here certainly have a good duel with the... Uh, the HRE, we've got Grenz here. Look at the size of this unit as well. Like This has got to be like a 200 plus man unit. Getting chewed though. Look at that. Look at the hole they just made with the artillery there. These Grenz they're going to... They're pretty decent. I think they have decent accuracy. Um, we've got more Grenz here as well. You can tell because they've got like these uh, like sort of like... Not Fez hats, but you know like... Different sort of style shackos on. And that's that's like the sign of a Grenz Typically. It uh, looks like the line fight over on the far side as well is also getting a bit more intense. Pressure starting to bring more muskets to bear. France is also getting kind of pounded pretty hard here by artillery. And this fight for the town is starting to get underway. I mean, it's still, again, Prussian not really commanding many, like, much in the way of infantry lines. I don't know how much more he's got. But you can certainly throw more forward if you wanted to try and get around the uh, the French. They're going to try a big push here of the French. They're actually getting hit hard by artillery.
Our men are running, sir. Looks like the French preparing a bit of an offensive there again. Oh, guns getting broken now for the French. Again, yeah, just back again. It must be just a lucky uh, like shot on by the guns, just like firing onto them and hitting them. As unfortunately, got a huge artillery battery being formed up here. Though I don't know if they're limbering it up. They might be trying to. Ba fancy moving it somewhere else by the looks of it. But yeah, looks like both sides on this uh, on this flank are about to uh, get ready for some sort of cavalry engagement. Prussia is preparing a big, big cav unit there. And the French have a fairly healthy dragoon as well set up here. Looks like both sides open to the idea. They might want to start retreating this cav unless they wanted to just get shot. Pulling back the infantry behind the stakes. It's probably a safe idea. I don't know why they would want to try and push any further forward than their stake line. Yeah, the battle is raging on along the front now. Most engagements are being... Uh, like most areas being engaged over. Oh gosh, look at this. Look how close they're getting. The, the guns, the guard gun here. I think it's down to one gun now. No, both are still operational. Oh no, this is the 12 pounder now. Yes, yeah, so it's just the one guard gun being op operated. And now I presume they're firing canister at that range. Yeah, they are pounding those poor Grenzers. Uh, the French infantry breaks there. I don't know why they didn't just send that unit into, uh, into melee, to be honest. With the support of the guns, if they got the, um, the volley off right, they could do some serious damage here. Yeah, the Grenz, I think, are going to charge the guns. Probably a better idea. Uh, they might get one more volley off here, though. Hit it hard! Oh, that is beautiful! That is beautiful! And we just get a cannon sounds back at the perfect time as they break that Grenz. What a beautiful Our canister running, there. Sir. And that is a huge, you know, Grenz gone. And the guard artillery reigns supreme. Now it looks like, look at this, there's going to be another brave HRE unit that can give to go. Uh, but it looks like I've seen, again, a bit of a more of a push here. Look at the HRE. Uh, it's breaking, looks like some uh, SARS again. And also looks like some uh, some Dragoons. And they are you know, French French here in the middle. Certainly trying to get some stuff done. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. I don't know who, they, who he thinks going to... Um, who he thinks is going to be victorious. But it's definitely looking very even right now. I think the French and the... Uh, and the coalition both losing some, some very good assets. Mainly the cav, both sides. A few guns have been lost here and there as well. A, and a decent amount of infantry trade. It's very close, I'd say, still. I certainly think that this HRE army over here, though, seems like it's lacking maybe a little bit. Um, I, I, they might have more infantry hidden. I can't really tell because of the fog of war. But uh, I certainly feel like the French just have equal numbers and they're entrenched in a nice position. These guns are just going to be a pain to try and break through. And the HRE, I think, is consistently going to just keep trying to march up this hill, trying to take it. And if it's, yeah, just keep putting an infantry unit here, the guns as well, something like that it's going to hold. They're down to three men on a gun. Still operating that gun perfectly fine. That, that guard artillery is incredibly good. Incredibly good. Worth every penny. The French on this side seem like they're holding pretty well. They've brought up their uh, artillery even closer, I think. Oh, no, the fourth no, the the one's still over there. No, that, maybe that one's been there this entire time. Yeah, they've got a lot of guns over here. We've got, like, what, two eight-pounders. We've got another eight-pounder back there. Twelve-pounder around the front line. They, they are just... The French can't give this ground up, really, because they would be giving up so many guns. But the Prussians are coming forward. These guys look a little bit more elite in their, in their typical, like, Prussian navy color. Yeah, the Prussians look like they're coming forward. They're going to make an offensive here across the entire line. They're getting much closer to these French guns, doing a lot of damage to the infantry, as you can see here. And it looks like, again, another melee fight going in. We've got Cav, it looks like, for the uh, HRE coming back in on this right flank here. Seems like this is where most of the action's really going on, like, actually, like, melee fighting going on. There you go, they push back to Cav. French uh, Dragoons coming in to support. They're actually trying to get out these uh, Schutzen right now. They're trying to take these Jaegers out. Oh no, they're not. They're just a, it's just a scattered French... Uh, I'm sorry. 
HRE unit. I mean, it could be a French unit, I guess. If, uh, the HRE do have like some uh, French units amongst them, but I don't think it is. And look at that, they've actually managed to break this unit, these two units here, and they've actually made, maybe got a bit of a breakthrough going on now. This Dragoon can now go down the line of the HRE, and yeah, the HRE having to dash Cav across to try and support over here. There was actually also French uh, Royalists at Valmy, so that is kind of like, you know, French units being amongst the HRE, that kind of, you know, works. But yeah, the uh, Dragoons, I think, are going to route here, yeah, the uh, arrival of HRE Cav is much fresher. Much healthier as uh, has managed to rather, but they might return 30. It's, it's relatively healthy still. Um, we've got a square forming here, and they're going to uh, stop any sort of counter charge now by the HRE. It's actually a guard unit as well. We've got the Chasseurs, the guard console. Very good unit that's being thrown in there. And now they're going in for other French units that are le not able to form a square and are a bit more vulnerable. They managed to take out that UL unit there. That's a little bit of a win. Maybe they'll go down the line here. These units, well, not all of them can form square. Some can, but yeah, the HRE decides to, uh, well, actually, he decides to just route. I was going to say cut his losses, but he just routed. And now we've got Chasseurs of the Guard here, engaged in melee. These men that go on to become the old guard. This is probably the only unit that you shouldn't really be able to bring. It's like 1792. Like, you should, there should be like a, 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 a no on these guys because... Historically, the consoles weren't even a thing yet. That's very much, uh, well, yeah, 1799. Very much that sort of period. Uh, the French should make, make a little dash as well with the Hussars. They actually managed to take out uh, an artillery piece over here. But uh, some Ulans have come up and they've managed to uh, get rid of the Hussars. But still a bit of a win there, really, for the um, for the French. Getting rid of another artillery piece. Obviously, artillery is king. All the uh, Prussians here fancy taking out these skirms. Um, I'll go for the guns, in fact. Eight pounders, yeah, getting taken out by the looks of it. Oh, no. Literally at the last second, stopped by the French Cav, and the uh, artillery's been saved. They're going to just uh, get off their guns. There are a lot of generals as well around there, so if you've got that gun, uh, if the Prussians got that gun, they might have been able to go on and get a general. Could have made the game a little bit more spicy. Musketeers here, still dueling away. Uh, looks like the... I don't know. Looks like the French giving up some ground. Not much, though. Like, they're slowly like, evacuated out of this town, but not too much. This is the main area where they cannot give up because the uh, 12 pounders here. They go, ain't getting these guys out of here if the Prussians really make a big push. And it looks like. Looking at the point, oh, no, that's all French. I was thinking it was that Prussians that got that close, but no. The Prussians retreated from this area clearly because it just was not working for them. Like, the closer it gets to those guns, the worse it's going to be. Looks like they really think that this right flank is something to work with, which it might be. We've got some, uh, we've got some grenadiers over here setting up. So they're thinking maybe a bit of a push here, maybe. Usually when grenadiers move somewhere, players thinking about a melee assault. It is what they kind of operate well in. I mean, they've got pretty decent shooting stats as well, the grenadiers, but, you know, they're there for their bayonet twirling. The French Cav here sniffing about. It's kind of getting around the flank of the Prussians here. They need to be aware of that. Prussian, because that the cav right now, yeah, kind of divides the two, divide the two Prussian armies. And the HRE are properly pulling back now. I think they've realized that they just can't break through this line. Whether they can, are allowed to shift across and support uh, Prussia and just leave the French there. I mean, if they leave like a small token force around the town with some cav, maybe they could then shift stuff over to support Prussia. And sort of like slam into the side this French player. I don't know how much of the HRE is like left because I feel like one of them just brought all Cav, lost his general, and then obviously the Cav all died as well. I feel like that's the case, but I'm not really sure. All right, we'll have to look at the end of like army sizes. Yeah, Prussia still being resolute. Actually forcing the French back a little bit here. To be honest, it could be for the, uh, in the French's uh, sort of like benefit to retreat here. I was looking for the word. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word benefit. Do they fall back here? The French still get a bit of a nice flank with the, uh, the shots from the armory and also this unit here, the 40, uh, 40th line. You can just shoot into the side if the Prussians keep moving forward. And it looks like the French are actually going to go for a uh, bit of a melee fight here. 
one of their infantry going in, especially getting shot to pieces. Jeez, a poor unit there. That has a lot of uh, Frenchies getting killed. Yeah, we've got some staffs as well behind the building. I don't know if they're shooting and killing their own men in the building, but they might. I don't know. But yeah, we've got a... Uh, I think there's maybe a couple of staffs in this building, yeah. They're going to be tough to get rid of. They're basic grenadiers. So we are back on the battlefield. Unfortunately, the replay did crash. It seems like a common theme with these NDW3 battles. But yeah, we are back basically where we let off the uh, Prussians here made an assault action for the armory here. Uh, there are sappers, as I was saying, inside this building. So it's going to be a tough one for the Prussians to actually take. Because, like I was saying, the sappers basically count as grenadiers. And they're tiny ass units, so they're very useful for putting in buildings. But yeah, yeah, it looks like the Prussians are redlining here already. Having a bit of a tough time. Certainly, uh, also being hit from multiple directions is also not helping these Prussian uh, forces over here that are trying to uh, make a push and a breakout. It looks like also the uh, French moving guns back across. Look at these guys. They are pretty speedy F5s as well, so they are moving pretty quickly, uh, able to come back over here and try and deal with this uh, Prussian counter, well, assault really. Um, also, the 8-pounder Grand Battery that's up on this hill is probably having a field day. The French actually are getting pushed out the 40th line here, and also looks like some Sappers routing as well, so Prussians are being slightly successful. Whether they can get this big cavalry unit to bear in some way, I don't know. There isn't much in the way of, there's a small cavalry battalion unit over here. I'll say small, it's 50 man. Um, but yeah, that could maybe uh, be of use, and they could maybe try and make a push on the infantry, I mean, and, and the guns here. I don't know, it could be doable. Looks like the French certainly are starting to suffer as well from uh, breaking units. Their units are also redlining around. And the other staff is going in. Here we go, a Prussian cavalry charge coming in, going for the uh, 12 pounders here. Brilliant canister shots, last minute there, trying to stop these uh, Prussian uh, cavalrymen, but it's not slowed them down at all. They're still very much happy, green confident. Got the guns now, Prussia move forward with the infantry. Can they make something happen? The dragoons going in as well, trying to challenge these Prussian cavalrymen. Like I said, I think they're cuirassiers, so I think it's going to be quite tough. And they, the, there you go, the Prussians have managed to take the armory as well. A huge win there for the Prussians, managing to take this town. And it looks like they're also going to take out the cavalry here as well. And yeah, big win there for the uh, Prussians, managing to push back the French. And this is the first real significant coalition success, you'd say, in this battle. Big, big win there. Uh, another big cavalry fight taking place on this side. The HRE have gone forward again with their cav. And uh, they've also... Um, not really succeeded. <laughs> They've been having a rough day today at the HRE. We've got more a, uh, French cab on the way. They managed to, uh, to clear off uh, these uh, HRE troops. There are also some uh, Prussian goons here by the looks of it. And they're going to try and scare off the carry battalion. Yeah, that offensive has not gone so well for the... Uh, the coalition. But they have managed to uh, take this ground here. I don't know if, they, Our men are running, if the sir. French gave it up. Or, or what, but they gave up this ground that they've been fighting over for so long, maybe because the guns here broke. Um, they have been abandoned, or they've at least abandoned the 8-pounder um, guard artillery. And I think they've actually abandoned the other one as well. So, um, yeah, that might be that might be the reason why. I also had a quick look at the um, at, like the end results, um, uh, just to see like the size of the armies. And yeah, there are actually two all-cav armies. There's like two uh, armies that are both like around seven or 800 men. That suggests all cav army so uh, that makes sense as to why there is so much cav at this battlefield here today i mean uh, hatred anyway typically brings quite a lot of cav and so do the prussians but yeah certainly in that first when you saw in that very first bit of action and you saw like the uh the hatred just throwing like five or six units of cavalry like oh and then more appeared behind you like oh yeah there's like an all cav army being formed Pounders here, though. Like, look at this grand battery that they have set up here. It's now six guns. Um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, the Prussians are getting pounded hard now in this open ground that the uh, the guns can just like sort of operate over. Yeah, they're hitting. Like, look at another unit. They're getting pounded by artillery. Yeah, this is, I guess, a bit of a layer defense. Yeah, the French sort of falling back to this uh, 
Derry here. I guess they can't make, an, uh, make a counter attack onto the town. Maybe they're not allowed to. They don't really have the forces to either at the moment, I don't really think. And they got some health units over here, but might need a little bit more than that. And they don't know. I don't know if they have the cav either. Prussian cavalry here is still looking very strong, very healthy. Coming forward once again after the success of charge. That will probably be a major target, I imagine, for artillery as well on that hill. They're going to be pounding this away, tripping down at the forces. Looks like the uh, Prussians are trying to make a sort of uh, push for the armory here. It's taking them a long time. They kind of got a bit delayed and sidetracked going for the infantry here. We have got HRE artillery as well coming up to support. Looks like, like some small guns of some sort. They don't look like they're big, maybe like four, three or four pounders. And Franz actually looks like he's evacuating from the side over here. He's sending troops over to support in the center. And fair enough, because I honestly think HRE here is kind of beaten. They've got have their little town that they occupy, but they had that the whole time. The French was kind of sat on this hill, and they've they've really made the uh, the HRE bleed. Yeah, still got the twelve pounder here. That's in a good position. The French have just so many guns, as they should. This is the Battle of Valmy. You have plenty of guns at it. The line fight continues. Frenchies fighting for their homeland. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the battle. It's certainly been a very fun one so far. There's still plenty of it to go by the looks of it. Still seems like there's plenty of forces on... Uh, on either side, the Prussians still looking relatively healthy. Seems like they keep bringing more and more forces forward. And the French, as we can see, still in fairly decent condition in some areas, that is for sure. Fighting for this, uh, this wall over here, losing some troops. The Chasseurs trying to hold on. Reform, man, reform! French Cav here was thinking about going for uh, maybe an attack. I don't know what they were looking at. The artillery, I mean, the Prussians obviously shifting sort of more centrally now. Uh, trying to avoid this sort of artillery uh, barrage they keep getting if they, they go down this right hand side now. There are some uh, Prussian troops. I don't know if these are just some of like we rallied or just reserves that they're keeping here around the town in case the, in case the French come back. But they're the only ones that are now getting pounded hard. Yeah, look at that. This unit's redlining because of artillery. It's actually broken. So yeah, that's all really the uh, coalition can do at this point. It's trying to try and avoid the French guns as possible. They actually made a bit of an attack here of the French. Bold of them to do. There you go. The Swiss have broken. The Prussians just about hold on. Prussians are kind of like, you know, attacking on multiple fronts. So this is the unit trying to get side shots onto the units here. They're forcing back the French. They're very close to the back of the map, by the way, now. There is not much further to go. I mean, really, this last defense will probably be this tree line. After that, they're in the open again. Um, and it's not so great. That, like, at least the tree line can offer some decent cover. I think that's kind of where the French are trying to reform up here. It's not a bad idea. French cab getting forced back as well. Shot as it retreats. I don't think the carrier battalion is definitely not as strong as the uh, more heavy, like sort of Prussian Carassia. I don't know if they've got more back in. They've got some more cavalry here. This might be another uh, Curassia. Looks like the Prussians again coming forward with Cav here going in after some uh, carrier battalion. Oh no, they're going for the guns. I didn't even see them myself. A little gun unit here. Carrier battalion can come support. I mean, a win taking out the gun if they can get this cavalry unit as well. Even better, but I don't think they will. Looks like the uh, well, I don't know actually if this Prussian cavalry can comes to the uh, comes to the aid. It might have a chance. A red lining though here. This building has fallen to the enemy. Building has fallen to the enemy. Uh, oh, the army has been taken. I think maybe because the French just vacated the area. To be honest. Yeah, here we go. Cav charge going in. They're going to get that. Uh, 
French cavalry battalion, and there you go, the Prussians hold on. There's another cab unit gone for the French. And now, I mean, really, they could just split the two French armies here if they wanted to. The HRE uh, coming forward once again. Like, not gone much, though, like I've been saying for a little while. This is just a very, uh, an army lacking. Really is lacking now. They've still got Grenzes and stuff, like some Schutzes and stuff like that, but nothing too exciting. And this is a very strong position they're trying to, like, take from the French here. I mean, they shoot their own Schutzen in the back. Maybe they're out of ammo, so they're just sending them forward. I don't know. Yeah. Not a good idea to shoot your own men. Oh, Cav 5 right in the center here of the fight. This could be deciding that French... Uh, so it looks like a Prussian Heavy coming forward here. The French Heavies are coming in as well. The French are now going in with Carrier Battalion, trying to go after the Prussians. Most of the Prussian infantry, I know, for a fact, can't form square. So they'll be vulnerable. Getting shot up quite a lot. I mean, this Prussian is shooting its own infantry and it's also shooting the cavalry there. It's a bit of a risky move. Trying to yeah, get side shots in the cavalry. Tell you how this unit here hasn't broken, I don't know. It looks like an elite unit. There you go, they broke it. I wonder if these are like Prussian guards or something, because they do look pretty decent. Cavalry again coming in, the Dragoons here. Gonna slam into the side of these uh, Prussians while also being engaged by French infantry. This might break them, that has done the job. There you go. And that is that is some um, some progress there. It looks like also we've got French Cav here. Yeah, Cav Battalion has managed to route the uh, the heavies of Prussia, and they've actually forced back the Prussians here. That could be huge. That could be the uh, counter attack that the French needed. Prussian player over here. They're still looking very good. Uh, also with the HRE guns up supporting him, they, they seem to be like they can move up pretty quickly. They're pretty mobile. actually treat the infantry because otherwise the guns are going to do a lot of a lot of friendly fire here yeah the, uh, the line fight they're not winning now uh the prussians because well they're in the tree line of the french they have more cover it's just kind of how it works whether the prussians could kind of use their own tree cover here maybe on the right flank try and force a way forward i don't know that would be what i'd be trying try and stack up infantry here maybe go for a melee charge or something or we'll get the gun somewhere over there maybe yeah, certainly seems like this right flank now in a little bit of disarray. I mean, the Prussian player is kind of, uh, you know, he had troops left at the village, so he didn't really bring up his full force, and what he sent forward just wasn't enough. There's also French cap, by the way, in the back lines here, and there is also uh, Prussian guns open to be taken out. I think this is the horse artillery ages ago. They got stuck. Just keep taken out. Um, but yeah, French cap now, Dragoons, Schomburg, Dragoon, Dragons, or Dragoons is what you'd say, really. Um, they're there. They're just going to do their bit. I don't know how they can't route this Prussian gun, but they can't. I don't know where it actually is. They need to be careful of that to the Prussians. And there's also a uh, Hussar here in the back line, so yeah. They're just looking around like they're like hunting like sharks for generals, I imagine, and guns. Or just rear charge that they can get off. Is that, what's that over there? Is that a Prussian gun in place when it is? Another one's been left at the back line, so they're gonna get a shot off. Oh, that's pretty brutal from the canister, actually. Really nice. They might actually wrap that Schomburg Dragoon there. It's redlining. But so are the Prussian guns. Oh, the, the Dragoons have rallied. Ah. That's sad. If it was a weaker unit, definitely I think they would have just minced that unit there. That's unfortunate. Uh, it looks like the uh, Hussar, I don't know, just trying to find a way to kill that, that light, uh, that, that, that gun off. We also had a charge here from the Dragoons. They've managed to route some of the uh, HRE guns. Not all of them. They managed to get one lot. Poor defense really there from the Prussians. Allowing these guns to be taken out so easily. The HRE uh, actually are forcing back the, um, the French here as well. The French are giving ground. They've lost their guns here as well. They've lost the 12 pounder. Maybe there's more to this uh, HRE army than I thought. I mean, it seems like there's a decent amount of line infantry left. Still forcing them up. They're also a large units in the French as well. So they out, like, have more muskets. They out certainly outgun them. Um, I don't know if the HRA has any artillery itself over here. I can hear artillery firing. 
the art uh, HU have any artillery they could wheel up here really quickly. That would be ideal. And the French actually are giving more ground. They are not fighting uh, for the tree line anymore. They're like, I mean, they're right at the back of the forest, but they're not quite... Uh, they're not at the front of it anymore. Probably because this French army here is having to retreat. They're uh, preempting that they're going to have to fall back their line. The HRE are slowly following, but the HRE, yep. Typically known for being a slow, lumbering beast. There we go. Russia successful in this sort of line fight, sort of. I mean, they lost guns, which is pretty important. Actually, I think they lost both. I think both of them. Uh, yeah, the other one broke. I think maybe just a musket fire or something. I don't know really what pressure he plants it. I would just ignore that fence line. Just try and smash through these two units here. And then try and split the two French armies. That's kind of what I do. Also, you avoid the guns as much as possible. But speaking of, the French guns are on the retreat again. Eight pounders here are falling back. Looks like they'll stun... Uh, oh no, that little hussar... Oh no, those two units are still in the back here. Yeah, they're still hunting stuff down. There's a Prussian general, I think. That is very open here. Prussian something... Oh, shut son. It's not even a general. Good to see they are keeping their generals close. They're also trying to keep the cavalry close to the general as well. That would be certainly what I would be hunting down if I was the French player. I would be hunting generals. Certainly Prussian ones, because it seems like they this was strong. Out of the coalition left. Oh, yeah, these are like some proper decent like, line of the Just like uniform wise. This one might be a guard unit. I'm not sure. So they're doing some serious work on these uh, on these line infantry here. I mean, you can see that the French are turning the flank to try and support a little bit. They've got the carabineers there trying to shoot to the flank, do their bit. I push forward more Prussian musketeers to see if you can make something happen here. Prussia is also now going into the forest. They are recommencing their line fight here. The French have got a nice little hill. Don't actually how much of the uh, Prussians they can see, looking from their perspective. They can't even see them. But that won't stop them firing, I'm sure. Yeah, lots of chasseurs. We've still got the uh, chasseurs of the guard as well alive. The handy units still have alive. Kick in. I guess. I don't think we are going to run out of time. I think the... Um, I don't think the time is going to time out. I think the battle will end before then. I think if the, the French survive, then that technically is a... Uh, is a the French, because they've just got to stop the Prussians and the HRE. Yeah, both sides, but they still have a decent amount of troops. And look at this, HRE troops are coming down the road. They're coming to support over here. It's probably a better idea. Yeah, coming to support the uh, the Prussian advance here. France has uh, pretty much got his right flank back, and he's rejoined up with the main force. He's just left a little uh, Carabiner here to sort of harass, but I don't think that's in any danger of being caught by the slow-moving HRE. But yeah, look at this. Pressure is being forced back once again. The chasseurs doing their bit. The guards are improving their worth. Still, I think all French generals alive. The coalition only just lost the one. Right at the start of the battle. It's a very common strategy you see here. You got like the uh, second line of uh, Prussians looking the other way, so they just so they can keep friendly. Uh, they can keep fire at will on, but uh, you know they won't friendly fire each other. It's not a bad. It's not a bad idea. And certainly also a rear charge has happened now from dragoons or those hussars that are waiting, and they could at least uh, just shoot them straight in the back. But actually, the rear charge is going to take place over here. Uh, they actually did turn around right at the last moment there with the uh, Prussian infantry. They fired right into the face of those hussars. Got them. They nearly redlined though and broke. And we have got a uh, that grenadier still alive. I totally forgot about it. We still have a grenadier alive. That's shooting at the uh, the Schomburg goons over there, trying to do some damage to them. I don't know why I'm just calling them the Schomburg goons, but they are now. That's the that's their thing. We actually have two guard units here. Oh, these are grenadiers of the guard. Okay, and they're the chasseurs of the guard. Okay, so yeah, these guys are technically the grognards, and these ones are like, the ones that just come chasseurs of the 
yeah, still two <laughs> strong units here right in the center of the French uh, right flank. The center of the right flank doesn't really make sense, but you know what I mean. Yeah, Prussia can just kind of keep occupying the French here in this tree line and sort of edge them out of it, then kind of a win for them. HRE has now arrived, sort of joining the, uh, the fun. They're going to be able to force back this right flank. Seems like France still doesn't have enough actually to get quite to the red line, unlike the HRE. That's where I've started to really push hard, see if you can wrap the uh, French up. And also if you stay to the red line or close to it, it doesn't really allow Cav to operate very well either, because it's just a, front it's just a frontal charge. They are going to take out these musketeers here of the French. Carrier Battelier here having no issues there. He's Prussian infantry redlining immediately. He must have re-rallied or something. We've got Prussian cab now coming forward, but it might be a little too late. We'll see. Uh, actually, maybe not. They're going to catch some of them. Will they catch the whole unit? I think they will, actually. You know, they're redlining as well. Just be careful they don't get uh, Yeah, there you go. They didn't actually get that carry battalion. A big win there for the Prussians. And they lost two infantry units. We took out another precious French cavalry unit. And that's what it could come down to. Who has more cavs? I mean, that's also useful from the, uh, for the French. They just, like, machine gun that poor uh, cav unit there with all their artillery that's starting to form up again. They are reforming the Grand Battery here. It's moved from one hill to another hill. Looks like the French again here trying to be aggressive on this uh, Prussian side, on this Prussian right. This certainly could be a, a problem for the Prussians as they keep pushing forward. This French force, which they've not really dealt with, it's kind of ignored, can actually now try to shut the door on the uh, on the Prussian right. It seems like there's a few issues now with the uh, Prussian left, the coalition left. The Prussian is there starting to waver. As they expected, the HRE really pushing hard on this flank. Whether they can hit this Carabiner, there isn't really any French cab close at hand. There's a dragoon in the middle that's already made its mind up where it's going. But if the, uh, if the infantry here just goes for a bayonet charge, I think they'll be fine. Oh, and there's a tiny little carry battalier, I guess, that actually could do something. I generally think it's a general. It's that small. If I was a coalition player, I'd be calling out for one of these Prussian cavalry units to get it to the flank here. Sending the infantry into a bit of a line fight, I think they could break some of these guys. Maybe not the sappers, but they could break some of the smaller line infantry. Either with a line fight or with a or with a bayonet charge. They could really concentrate one here, just break this carabiner, then just go on through. The cav support to take out the carry retaliate. They could do some work. Oh, actually it doesn't matter, the sensor's starting to crumble. Prussian lines not looking good. Uh, sorry, Prussian lines have broken the French lines here. Been a good job. We've actually seen um, a counter charge. What the heck actually counter charge? Oh, French cab. June said That's why they formed square. I was wondering why. They've managed to break through. There's a big hole now in the French center. To screw that, it looks like the French might be in a real bit of trouble here. They've got to work hard. They've got to get this uh, Dragoon, I think, back over to the side, uh, to the flank. We're going to see uh, Carabineers Apeed go in. They're actually, yeah, the Grenadier Skirmisher. They're actually pretty handy. They actually might be able to do something in melee here. We'll see. Yep, they broke them. So yeah, they can do something. And they'll get the other one here. And actually, you know what? That's actually now threatening the uh, Prussian right. So even though the Prussians, like I said, breaking through the center, the right is still an issue right now for the uh, for the coalition. And an assault was made by the H3 onto these Carabineers. And I totally, like I said, totally forgot that they were Grenadier skirmishers. So they actually held their own in melee. I also think the Carrier Battalier had something to do about it as well. That's, uh, I think, since routed. Yeah, they, they've left. They're going in for Grenzers now. We'll see whether this works. If the French right buckles now as well, then that will be pr uh, problematic. But it looks like they're going to try and retreat it. Try and reform. Looks like the Carabineers actually might be able to uh, beat this Grenzer as well, which would be incredible. And there you go. They actually break it. Wow. And the General is technically under threat, but I don't think he will. But yeah, Carabineers broke as well. I just carry on. If I was a HRE, just carry on as you were. 
He might have lost a couple of units to some uh, Caravaneers, but honestly, that might be the biggest threat. These line infantry units are so small, so depleted. You're going to outgun them. You, you do pretty well in shooting stats anyway. We've done quite a few, like, these early period, like, revolutionary battles uh, recently. Like, Shamaps and Thamars. And the HRE outgun the, uh, the French when it comes to a line fight. Kind of how they got to keep it. Don't get too close. I mean, they're getting very close to this unit here. I don't know why he is going to go for a bayonet charge by the looks of it. He just fancies his chances. French General Suchet is moving over as well. He's getting hit hard by artillery. Yeah, they fancy their chances, the HRE. No, surely not. Yeah. I mean, I backed this up with something. I mean, if the other units go in now... This is a bold move. I honestly think this is very, very bold. They are, they, yeah, they, they are redlining. They are redlining. French here. They're just going to shoot to the side. And the H3, I think, will lose the fight. Some of the French are still breaking their chasseurs here. The guard might need to come across, I wonder. Redlining. Oh, dear. Yeah, not looking good. And more H3 units. Going into melee. If they can get all these guys into melee and tie down the French, they've got a chance. And they have routed that with unit as well. Yeah, this is looking problematic. Yeah, HRE are actually winning in melee. I never thought I'd say it. They actually made a, a successful bayonet charge and they're routing multiple units now. I don't know if they got any guard. Oh no, the, the chasseurs of the guard are breaking. They are gone. I don't know where the Grens are. They might have already broken themselves. I think they have. And they're gone. The French are going to try a brave cavalry charge into the flank here of the Prussians. See if they can slow them down. They're going for the ones that are looking the wrong way, which is probably the smartest ones to go for. They've broken one. Can they break a second? Can they cause a bit of a, char a, bit of a mass route here? Infantry going in as well as support. This will certainly help the uh, situation as well as help the cause. It is going to be a brutal last charge, uh, like last part of the fight here. Like, it's going to be who can route who first. Because the uh, hatred are working down this line very nice. Look at this mass route. But also the uh, French are trying to do the same now. They've routed three Prussian units, trying to engage some more. Uh, the Prussians, look, they're actually pushing back the French here as well with the cavalry support. They've actually managed to do some work here. The Grenadiers are also coming in. And there you go, a draw. Oh, I honestly think that the French might have gone on to lo lose that if they had a little bit more time to run. That is unfortunate for the uh, coalition because I think they had the French on the run. Um, so I... Kind of want to give it to the coalition, to be honest. But technically, because the French held, I think it's technically their victory. Um, but yeah, that is oh, it's really tough. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Who do you think won? Technically, yeah, I think because the French held, and that's kind of like the objective. They have just a, a staggered defense. They held that, technically, by still being on the battlefield. But the Prussians and the uh, HRE, give them like two more minutes. I Two or three more minutes. They had them. They had them. But yeah, so this was sent in by uh, Johnny Le Buffoon. Uh, so thank you very much, Johnny, for sending this one in. As always, he does an amazing job creating these scenarios. And yeah, this is an amazing, amazing battle. It's a really, really good one. We we'll started off really quick as well. And then we had a bit of a like co cool moment in the middle. And then finished off with a brilliant, brilliant cli like finish uh, with a, a very good climax. But uh, yeah, so we'll quickly have a look at the uh, unit stats. So we've got 115 kills with one of the carry battalion here. Actually, his cav doing the best. 109 with another one. His guns, no surprise, getting 70 kills. I feel like the guns, obviously, kind of one of the main uh, focuses of today's battle. Uh, Grouchy, uh, again, his cav getting like most of his kills here, actually. Uh, his well, actually, that's because Johnny was all cav. That'll be why. Um, so yeah, but yeah, very, very good uh, result for... Um, the French holding on just about, um, and I honestly, and I think it's still a good result as well for the uh, coalition. I think both sides can come away looking quite happy because they can both say, "Oh, we won the battle." Like the coalition will go and go on and win this, given like five more minutes, and then uh, the French could go, "Well, we actually completed our objective, so we won." So yeah, good battle all round for all. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next NTW3 historical battle. Until then. Bye for now.